Imagine standing face to face with a creature whose sheer power and primal instincts could turn your world upside down. Now picture this, a colossal brown bear, a force of nature with jaws that can crush bones like twigs. Just ask the Chad family who came toe to toe with this behemoth. Locked in a life or death struggle, they defied the odds and lived to tell the tale. Join us in this gripping episode as we unravel the chilling accounts of brown bear attacks. From wilderness nightmares to heart-pounding escapes, these encounters will leave you in awe of both human resilience and the raw power of nature. The Chad family made their home in the peaceful countryside of Anchorage, Alaska, which was located in an isolated part of the city. They were a simple family unit that was very close with one another, and they discovered peace in their natural surroundings. The parents, Hank and Allison, served as the firm foundation for the family. They had put in a lot of hard work over the years to make their house a welcoming place for their three children, Jaden, Andy, and Michaela. The bond that exists between members of the Chad family has not been weakened by the passage of time. Even though Jaden, Andy, and Michaela had each settled down with their own families and reached adulthood, they made it a point to return to the house where they had grown up on holidays and other significant occasions. This time around, they got together for a celebration of Allison's birthday, which was a happy event that brought them all back together after some time apart. The birthday celebration was a cozy affair marked by laughter, shared memories, and nostalgic stories. Andy, always the joker in the family, had suggested that they order pizza in order to make the occasion even more enjoyable for everyone. After getting everyone's go-ahead, he dialed the number of the neighborhood pizza joint, and everyone's taste buds immediately began to tingle in excitement in anticipation of the cheesy delight that was about to arrive. The family gathered in the living room while they waited for the pizza, and their hearts were warmed by the home videos that were played on the screen. The videos were of them when they were younger. Laughter and lighthearted conversation filled the air as they reminisced about the good old days when life was less complicated and there were fewer things to worry about. They were lost in a merry reverie when, all of a sudden, a series of loud thuds echoed throughout the house, jolting them out of it. Everyone looked at each other with a puzzled expression. Allison's brows furrowed in confusion as they had a doorbell that anyone delivering something should have rung. Andy, ever the optimist, however, suggested that it was possible that the pizza delivery person was unfamiliar with the doorbell and had therefore resorted to knocking on the door instead. Andy pulled up the courage to face the front door and retrieve the eagerly awaited pizzas by standing up from the couch and taking a deep breath. The remaining members of the family engaged in some playful banter, poking fun at the possibility of a pizza delivery mishap. They had no idea that what was waiting for Andy on the other side of the door was nothing like what their childish imaginations had created for him. Andy turned the doorknob and opened the door with a mixture of anticipation and amusement only to be greeted by a scene that would forever be ingrained in his memory. A huge brown bear had broken into their house, thinking that the doorway led to a pizza feast. Andy was immediately overcome with panic, confusion, and pure terror when he found himself face to face with the wild predator. Andy was attacked by a bear that lunged at him with incredible speed and power before he had a chance to defend himself. Andy was immediately pinned to the ground by its massive paws, and the room was immediately filled with the piercing sound of Andy's terrified screams as he struggled to get up. The family stood mute and terrified as they witnessed the brutal assault that was taking place right in front of their eyes. Hank was prompted to take action by his natural desire to shield his loved ones, and he immediately began making a lot of noise in an effort to divert the bear's attention away from the victim. But the ferocious creature turned its attention to Hank, overpowering him with its sheer might. As Hank was being mauled by the bear, the living room became a scene straight out of a nightmare. The bear's claws and teeth tore into Hank's flesh, leaving a bloody stain on the floor. In the midst of their frantic state, Jaden and Michaela were able to pull Allison away from the horrifying scene, and they then dialed the number for emergency services. Michaela's voice shook as she relayed the critical situation to the dispatcher and asked for immediate help along with the team of animal control officers. In the midst of the chaos, Jaden made a dash for his father's room and retrieved a rifle from there. This was a weapon that his father frequently used to keep bears away from their property. He went back into the living room with his heart pounding, aiming the weapon at the bear's feet and firing the shot. The bear howled in agony after the bullet entered its foot, which caused the injury. 
Unfazed, Jaden fired his weapon once more, this time aiming for the chest of the bear. The bear went limp and lifeless, removing any possibility of danger it may have posed. After a few minutes, the loud sirens of emergency vehicles could be heard piercing the air as personnel from animal control and emergency medical services rushed to the scene. Andy and Hank were delicately transported away on stretchers due to the severity of their injuries, which were miraculously not life-threatening. The lifeless body of the bear was painstakingly removed by the animal control team and transported to a conservation center for further examination for rabies. In a very short amount of time, the Chad family's life had been turned completely upside down. Their peaceful get-together had suddenly turned into a terrifying run-in with a dangerous animal. The family clung to each other as they were rushed to the hospital, thankful for their lives but permanently changed by the violence that had invaded their home. The news of the event quickly spread throughout the community in the days that followed, which sparked conversations about human-wildlife interactions and the significance of learning to coexist with the wild animals that shared their surroundings. The ordeal that was endured by the Chad family has become an important lesson, serving as a reminder of the unpredictability of the natural environment and the necessity of maintaining attentiveness even when one is in the relative safety of one's own home. Their family rallied around them and provided unwavering support and love as Hank and Andy fought to recover from the injuries they sustained. The Chad family's bond once again proved unbreakable, strengthened by their shared experience and the determination to overcome the trauma that had shaken their lives. The vast wilderness of Alaska was preserved. It was a realm where beauty and danger were intertwined, and the people who lived there learned the delicate dance of coexistence that occurs between humans and the natural world. The story of the Chad family, which was a mix of terror and survival, served as a powerful reminder that the human spirit can rise to meet challenges with constant bravery and strength, even in the most unexpected moments. In the heart of the rugged wilderness, where untamed landscapes stretched as far as the eye could see, two college wrestlers, Princeton and Dalton, embarked on an arduous journey to prepare for an upcoming match that held the promise of championship glory. Their routine had led them to a peaceful trail in an Idaho national park, a place of peace that was to be transformed into their crucible of strength and resiliency. As the two friends ran along the path, the rising sun painted the sky with shades of gold and amber casting long shadows in its path. Their breathing became synchronized, and the rhythmic pounding of their steps reflected the harmony that existed between them in their companionship. In the midst of the breathtaking vistas, they talked about their strategies while exchanging laughter with one another. On that day, however, fate had something else in store for them than what they had bargained for. Both Princeton and Dalton instinctively stopped moving when they heard a rustle in the underbrush, which caught their attention and caused them to stop. The wilderness was alive with whispers of danger, and as they turned their heads, their eyes met an unexpected sight, a majestic brown bear, its size and power eclipsing everything around it. Fear gripped their hearts, and they recalled the instructions they had been given regarding how to react in the situation where they came across a bear. Keep eye contact and gradually back away. But this bear was different. Its eyes glowed with unsettling intensity and without any prior warning, it lunged forward, its powerful muscles propelling it towards Princeton. As the bear came closer and closer at an alarming rate, it seemed as though time slowed down. The rapid thoughts that were racing through Princeton's head couldn't keep up with the reality that was playing out in front of him, and before he could respond, the enormous creature had him pinned to the ground. The sound of Dalton's scream echoed throughout the woods, serving as a shiver-inducing reminder of the sudden and brutal nature of the situation they were in. The harrowing ordeal that Princeton had to go through was a manifestation of the harsh reality of the situation. The claws of the bear were like sharp talons that slashed and tore into his flesh, turning the ground crimson with his blood. The wrestler's natural drive to survive kicked in, and he fought back with the ferocity of a man desperately clinging to the hope of living another day. He went for the bear's face and punched it with all the strength he could muster, his fists making contact with an angry and helpless expression on their faces as they made contact with the bear's face. Despite this, each punch, despite having some degree of success, appeared to fuel the bear's aggression. It growled and roared, the sound resonating through the air like a primal symphony of terror. Dalton stood still, 
his own strength overshadowed by the chaos that was unfolding in front of him. When Dalton's paralysis snapped, it was a moment that would define the bond that these two friends shared with one another. It was as if he had tapped into a bottomless pit of bravery, and he was propelled forward by a burning desire to rescue his friend. He went in for the attack, bringing the full force of his wrestler's physique to bear on the bear. Dalton gave the creature a good old-fashioned body slam, and the impact of the collision between man and beast resonated with the sound of their fight for survival. After successfully gaining a position on the bear's back, Dalton grabbed hold of the animal's ears and pulled with all of his might. The agonizing roars of the bear could be heard throughout the area, but Dalton's unyielding determination was ultimately successful. He circled his hand around the bear's face with sheer determination, his fingers finding their mark on the creature's eyes as they came into contact with them. The bear's world was engulfed in darkness and the bear's agony worsened as a result. Despite this, the bear was not subdued. It shook Dalton off in a fit of rage and agony, its base instincts driving it to flee from the searing pain that it was experiencing. As the bear retreated into the wilderness, its thunderous steps gradually faded into the distance. Dalton was left standing in the aftermath of the violent encounter, and the sound of his heartbeat rang loudly in his ears. During the chaotic struggle, he sustained an injury when he was bitten on the arm. But the sight before him, Princeton, bloodied and battered but still alive, made the pain from his own wound seem insignificant in comparison. The resilience of their relationship had triumphed against the odds, and Dalton's bravery had swung the odds in their favor. Gathering every ounce of his own strength, Dalton approached his friend. He lifted Princeton into his arms with unyielding resolve, the pain from his own wounds feeling like a distant ache in comparison to the urgency of getting his friend medical attention. The journey back to civilization was difficult, and each step was a demonstration of their endurance, as well as the strength of their friendship. In the end, they made it to the hospital, where the medical staff labored valiantly to patch up Princeton's badly broken body. It was a testament to his indomitable spirit, and the unwavering bravery of his friend Dalton, that he had survived the brutal mauling, which was a miracle in and of itself. In the days that followed, both Princeton and Dalton were put through rigorous testing to screen for rabies and other infections that could have been transmitted by the bear's bite. The bond that they had established in the testing environment of the wilderness was more important than the result. It is a testament to the unbreakable bonds of friendship and the strength of the human spirit that their story spread like wildfire, capturing the imagination of people far and wide. As Princeton continued to get better, his determination did not waver in the least. The event had no effect on his dedication. On the contrary, it had only served to stoke the fires of his passion. He returned to the wrestling arena with Dalton by his side, but this time not as simple competitors, but as warriors who had overcome a force of nature and emerged more powerful. Their tale left an impression not only on the walls of their university, but also in the hearts of those who heard it. Both Princeton and Dalton came to represent bravery, friendship, and unbreakable resolve after their adventures together. They had been put through the toughest of tests in the wilderness, and they had come out on top. This meant that they were champions not only in the wrestling arena, but also in the arena of life itself. And so, the story of Princeton and Dalton continued to motivate, serving as a reminder that even in the face of the most primal and savage challenges, the bonds of friendship could become a beacon of light, guiding the way through the darkest of nights. A hiker by the name of Mara Smith went missing while she was out in the wilds of Wyoming, and a small team of experienced rescue workers was given the difficult task of finding her and bringing her back home, because even the most experienced explorers have been known to struggle in this region's dense forests and towering mountains. The team's sense of urgency has been heightened as a result of Mara's disappearance. Alan, an accomplished outdoorsman who possessed years of experience working in search and rescue operations, was in charge of this group. Because of his level-headed demeanor and keen instincts, he proved to be an invaluable asset. The group consisted of seven individuals, each of whom brought a unique set of skills and experiences to the table. As they were getting together to plan their strategy, they came to the conclusion that splitting up into pairs would allow them to cover more ground in a more time-efficient manner. Alan did not participate in the conversation that was taking place between the other members of the team. He had been looking over the maps and going over the various outcomes in his head while he was doing so, 
At some point, he broke his silence and proposed that he go out on his own to search the region that had the highest chance of containing Mara. The other participants were hesitant because they were concerned about the potential dangers of going into it alone, but Alan's track record was evidence of his competence. They gave in reluctantly, as they were also aware that time was of the essence. The morning was cool and clear, and as the first rays of sunlight hit the landscape, they painted it in various shades of yellow, green, and gold. Alan walked off into the distance by himself, a lone figure that vanished into the forest. His pace was slow and meticulous, each step bearing witness to the fact that he was well acquainted with the surroundings. The sounds of birds singing, leaves rustling, and the background rumble of a bubbling stream created a symphony in the woods. Alan continued to follow the trails, pausing every so often to check for hints that might direct him to Mara. The passing of the hours turned into the passage of miles. His ears and eyes were honed in on every rustle and movement, and his heart beat in time with the natural cadence of the wilderness. As he moved deeper into the heart of the forest, his determination did not waver, and time seemed to pass more slowly for him. Then, as if he had been called by destiny itself, he found himself confronted with the very embodiment of the wildness that he so admired. As it emerged from the darkness, a colossal brown bear could be seen, its fur shimmering with a mixture of golden and dark brown tones. Although Alan's heart skipped a beat, he did not show any signs of panic. As soon as his eyes locked onto the bears, it was as if an ancient understanding passed between the two of them. A chilling stillness pervaded the atmosphere for a fleeting fraction of a second. Alan did not flee the scene because he was aware that doing so could incite an attack. The silence, however, was shattered almost as quickly as it had returned to its previous state of calm. The bear's hostility continued to escalate as its massive form charged forward toward Alan at a speed that was absolutely terrifying. Alan felt a rush of adrenaline course through his body, and his natural instincts took over. When the bear lunged, Alan's training kicked in, and he was able to defend himself. He maintained eye contact and made an effort to assert his dominance while drawing on his previous experience with animals that hunted for food. However, the bear was not deterred, and it continued to charge at Alan until it finally collided with him and knocked him to the ground. The world erupted into a frenzy of sharp claws, sharp teeth, and fur. As the bear's jaws closed around his shoulder, Alan felt the pain spread throughout his entire body. He could feel the creature's hot breath on his skin and the growls of the beast resounded in his bones. The attack was unrelenting. Each swipe of a paw was like being hit by lightning, and each bite was like being squeezed in a vice. The ground beneath him was stained with blood, and the air was tainted with the smell of rusty iron. Alan's instinct for survival was fueled by his desperation. In the middle of the chaos, his hand managed to get a grip on his pocket knife. He summoned an immense amount of strength from the depths of his being and drove the blade into the bear's forearm with it. Alan was able to free himself after the animal let out a cry of agony, which caused the animal's grip to relax slightly. In spite of the excruciating pain that emanated from his wounds, he managed to scramble to his feet and put some distance between himself and the beast. The bear roared, and the sound of its distress could be heard throughout the forest. Alan's breath came out in ragged gasps, and his heart was pounding violently in his chest. In spite of his wounds, he was aware that he needed to get away from the immediate danger. He had to push himself to keep moving, and his legs carried him through the underbrush with an effort that was painful but determined. As the hours passed, it appeared that the forest would never end. Alan's vision began to blur at the edges and his steps became increasingly shaky. However, the thought of his teammates and the goal that they all shared pushed him to continue. At long last, they found themselves at their planned gathering place. As they took in his battered form, his fellow rescuers greeted him with a mixture of concern and shock. They sprang into action without any hesitation, gathering their injured comrade and evaluating his injuries together. The terrifying account of one man's fight for survival in the face of overwhelming odds came tumbling out of Alan's mouth. While they were carrying him back to the main camp, he turned around to look at the forest, which was a place that had tested him in ways that he could not have anticipated. Alan's wounds were treated in the days that followed, and they served as a constant reminder of the intense struggle that he had gone through. After Alan's run-in, the group got back together and rethought their strategy in light of what had happened. Then the news broke that would send shockwaves through the team. The DNA evidence confirmed that the same bear that had attacked Alan was responsible for the death of Mara Smith. 
The disclosure was a difficult pill to swallow. It was a collision of fates that tied Alan's survival to Mara's tragic demise. The team found themselves struggling with feelings of both relief and grief at the same time, and their mission took on a more serious tone as a result. The wilderness, which had previously served as a source of wonder, now carried a more sinister tone. Alan's wounds, both physical and emotional, eventually healed as time went on. The bond between the rescuers grew stronger, their shared experience forging an unbreakable connection. Alan continued to venture into the wild, not as a conqueror but as a humble explorer, whose life was forever changed by the indescribable beauty and harsh realities of the natural world. And as he turned his gaze toward the horizon, he was aware that each step he took was a memorial to those who had been lost and those who had been found, a demonstration of the strong will that had propelled them all.